Yeah, what's up, everybody? It is Tuesday, September 17th, day before Fed Day. Woo! So we got the numbers on yesterday's tax train. It was um, $103 billion. We had a three-day drain that was last Thursday, Friday, and yesterday of $134.2 uh, government balance for the month of September is now a 99.5 billion surplus. So uh, we had a pretty big swing. This was a much bigger tax drain than what we saw last year and last September. I think last September was around 90. Uh, so this was significant. Uh, year over year, net government transfers down now 290 billion. Okay, that got, uh, I guess, skewed a little bit by uh, the data that came in in today's Treasury statement. That'll probably narrow up a little bit, but you could, you know, I've been talking about this trend now for a long time, and I predicted way back, I said that the deficit, the federal deficit for the full fiscal year is gonna be like 1.4 to 1.5 trillion, and that is like, exactly that, like 250 billion below what it was last year. So we've lost a quarter of a trillion of transfers this year. And that explains the reason for the slowdown in the economy. The economy's only growing like two, two and a half percent. And again, we've had a trillion dollars of interest income transfers into the economy this fiscal year alone and if we didn't have that, that is the absolutely number one reason why the economy still is showing positive economic growth. And now again, I'm gonna repeat for the zillionth time, tomorrow we're gonna to get a rate cut. I don't know if it's gonna be 25 or 50. Frankly, I don't, I don't really uh, pay any attention because if they do one, they're gonna do more after that. And you know, I'm not, as you know, man, I'm not one of these monetarist zombies who are just completely fixated on this ridiculous, you know, are they going to do 25? Are they going to do 50? Are they going to do 25? 50? I mean, it's just a, a, a complete exercise in, in neuroses. These people are neurotic. I mean, it, it's like when you are like so micro-focused, and by the way, they don't even understand what monetary policy does. I mean, they only say it, like I always say, through a single variable analysis. They de they always uh, uh, look at it from the debt side of the equation when the non-government is a net creditor. I mean, that's the bigger, more important, impactful part. So, you know, I, I don't, whatever they do, they do. I'm telling you right now, like I said yesterday, that I look ahead, I look forward. I tell you guys, I've been telling you guys, we're gonna run into a uh, fiscal drag coming up as soon as the Fed starts to cut interest rates. And then again, in 2025, starting right away from January 1st, when they have to raise the debt ceiling, they probably will. And again, I'll just repeat that at the end of this month, they have to at least come up with a, Congress has to at least come up with a continuing resolution to keep the government funded. I, I don't know how close the two sides are there. You know, they always do brinkmanship right to the very end, to the 11th hour. They'll probably do the same thing because I don't think either side politically sees that as something that is going to help them in the election. So they'll probably come up with something, another extension until, I don't know, December. That's going to freeze spending at the current level. But that's a strong spending level, don't get me wrong. And I've been telling you guys that leading spending flows, leading flows are very strong, but the problem is taxes are draining that out. So, and that's just gonna continue. I mean, this is the, I call them the reverse automatic stabilizers. I've explained it in the past. It's the way the system is built. It's the way the system is set up. After long periods of economic expansion, you know, the government, it's like a vacuum cleaner, starts to suck up more tax revenue, not because they're raising taxes. It's just that as profits rise, as wages rise, as salaries rise, 
I mean, more money, same percentage, but more money uh, nominally flows to the government. And that just acts like, I've used the analogy of a brake on your car. It starts out very slowly. You're driving along. Everything is great. And then, you know, you're, uh, you're maintaining a speed, whatever it is, 55, 60 miles an hour. And then you slowly start to step on the brake. Your car slows down. And that pressure increases over time. And now with the Fed cutting interest rates, we're going to see very quickly. I'm telling you right now, we're going to see, well, you know, my, my subscribers are going to see very quickly because I'm going to send out the data, you know, on a regular basis. You're going to see very quickly uh, the shrinking in those interest income transfers. And again, the, that was the thing that held the economy up this year. All right. Next year, again, I'll go over it again. We have a lower uh, increase in the cost of living adjustment for Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, veterans benefits, military pay, all that stuff. You're not going to get the big increases like you had in 2022 and 2023. And even this year, you had almost a 4% increase. You know, that's going to go down to like 2%. It's going to be a crawl. Um, you got the fiscal drag that's going to come from the interest rate cuts. Okay, I'm giving you all, I'm like laying out the playing field, like basically for the next year, if not longer, unless there is some fiscal offset. And if there is, I'll let you guys know, like we got to get through the election. We have to see who gets elected. We have to see what economic policies are proposed. We have to see what gets passed, okay, in Congress. That's another thing, like what's Congress going to look like? Is it still going to be the same thing with the Democrats in control of the House? and the Republicans in control of the Senate. I don't know. We have to wait for that. <clears throat> Everything is policy, friends. Everything is policy. This is not some mystery, okay? This is not some guesswork. Like, this is not about looking at what the economy did 30 days ago or last quarter. This is about laying out a plan, looking ahead. I've used the example before, the analogy of the mariner on the open seas. You need to have your charts. You need to know how to navigate ahead, okay? You can't say, well, I've been to this place uh, way back through, you know, 300 nautical miles behind me, and that's going to tell me where I'm going to go. No, you have to have the charts. You have to be able to navigate. You have to be able to see. And if something pops up out there ahead of you, like weather, you got to be able to move around it, all right? You have to uh, adjust the strategy, adjust the course to move around it. So anyway, that's it. Uh, it's not a lot to talk, but tomorrow they're going to all freak out. Uh, today, I was not surprised. Again, we were up here for the third time, the S&P at this top level, you know, 56, 70. Uh, I've had that now as a resistance level for a long time. It keeps bouncing off of that. I wasn't surprised at the pullback today because we had a, a significant tax drain. Tomorrow with the rate cut, they'll probably put, finally push it through. The Dow is very close to an all-time high. NASDAQ is still lagging, okay? Um, so we'll see what happens there. But like I've been saying, like, you can't get greedy in this business, all right? If you feel like you need to chase after the, the, the stock market's been going up since almost two years, October, 2022. If you haven't made money in this enormous rally, that's on you, probably because you haven't been a subscriber to my report and you probably bought into all the hysteria about higher interest rates and what it's going to do to the economy. And of course, they had it all wrong. And if you feel the need right now, after two years of a monumental rally, and given the things that I'm telling you in terms of, of uh, the impact of the rate cuts, the fiscal drag, that if you feel you still need to jump in and chase after this last little burst, I mean, that, that's a bad mindset. I mean, that shows a complete lack of self-control. It's a very emotional, like, I got to jump in now. What if they're going to cut rates and it's going to go up? You know, this is so expected, number one. And number two, again, they don't even understand the impact of the rate cuts, 
All right. If you and the same thing with gold. Gold's been rallying for more than two years. I said back in March of 2022, this is one of the greatest buying opportunities. You could go back and look at my videos from March 2022 when I was pounding the table on gold. I said that producers had the smallest short position in gold that they ever had, okay? They were basically screaming to get long gold. And now they got the highest short position on gold in over two years, okay? But back in March, 2022, I was saying, it was $1,600, I was saying, you gotta buy gold, you gotta buy gold, you gotta buy gold. If you feel the need to jump in now, and maybe look, maybe there will be another, another little spike in here. It could very well happen because people are gonna react to this rate cut with this, you know, lack of understanding that, oh, I better go out and buy some gold right now. Were they doing that back in March of 2022? No, they were, nobody wanted to touch it. It was a hard sell for me talking to people about getting into gold back then. And I, you know, my report every single week, I was saying, this is a major, major opportunity here, okay? And I'm telling you right now, the same thing is gonna happen. I'm telling you right now, you got gold, take some money off the table. The rate cuts are not gonna be bullish for gold. I mean, I could go on and on and on with this, with this stuff. It, it all comes down to you and your own behavior. If you can't control yourself, if you're highly emotional, if you got the FOMO, flu, fear of missing out, then yeah, you're gonna chase after this stuff because you're watching CNBC or Fox Business and they're all telling you rate cuts, blah, 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 and it's gonna be so bullish and you know everything's gonna be wonderful. The soft landing, they got all this, this silly terminology for everything. Where meanwhile, every day they change the freaking what it's gonna be. You know, soft landing, hard landing, 25 basis point, 50 basis point. I mean, you, get, you, get, you go nuts listening to that shit. That's if that's your approach, if you think that is that is savvy, that is sophisticated, that's intelligent, then go for it. That's all I can tell you. If you want to learn something, if you want to understand something, if you want to be able to to be on the right side and to relax and to not be staring, you know, every two seconds at what the market is doing and have a, a big picture perspective, you gotta to come to me. You gotta to come to me. Anyway, please like and subscribe if you choose to do that. And uh, don't forget, go to my website, pitbulleconomics.com. Sign up for a 30-day free trial. It costs you nothing for 30 days, you know? Learn something. Educate yourself. Get informed. Take control. Calm down. Stop being emotional. Get some discipline. See you tomorrow. Bye.